digital document signing is still pain in the back despite of the fact that we have all these large language models, generative AI tooling, but still, if you want to sign a PDF document or any other document digitally, either you have to opt for some uh, Chrome extension, Edge plugin or something like that. And most of them are paid and they don't really work out of the box properly and quite cumbersome to use. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this open source free tool called as Documento. Documento is touting to be an alternative of DocuSign because they believe that signing documents digitally should be easy, fast and quick and should be the best practice for every document signed worldwide. But that would only be possible if it would be free, open source and easy to use and install. We are going to see how to install this tool document so locally and then we will play around with it. One thing, it has nothing to do with AI. The reason why I am covering it is that I think if you are looking for an idea to build an AI product, this might be a good use case where you could bring in some sort of LLM or VLM based intelligence into Documento or any similar tool. You can simply fork this repository and then build your own tool, I believe. If you uh, are looking for any help, please paste it in the comment. I'll be happy to um, chime in and I'm sure that others would be keen to. I will also drop the link to their GitHub repo in video's description. So, um, Documento aims to be the world's most trusted document signing tool, by the way. And this trust is built by empowering you to self-host Documento and review how it works under the hood. So, let's see how to install it. Before that, let me give a huge thanks to Mast Compute for sponsoring the VM. And this VM also has a GPU of 48 GB VRAM NVIDIA RTX A6000 courtesy Mast Compute. If you're also looking to rent a GPU, I will drop the link to their website plus a 50% discount coupon for range of GPUs. This is my Ubuntu system where I'm running 22.04 uh, version of Ubuntu. And this is a GPU card which I was referring to NVIDIA RTX. A6048 GB of VRAM. Let's first create a virtual environment with Conda. I'm just calling it doc and then we will see how to install this thing. And the virtual environment is installed now. Let's git clone the repo. I'm just, call, just downloading it and then I'm seeding into it. It is slightly bigger repo than usual which is okay. So let's wait for it to get cloned. Let me clear the screen. There are few prerequisites which you need. You would need to have a recent version of Docker. I already have it installed as you can see. We should also have node install, npm install, and, and I think NPS is not needed, but I think if you install it all together, it will install everything. So make sure that you have recent versions of these things installed. If you don't know how to install them, Docker, node, and npm, I already have done very easy to follow videos please search the channel and you should be able to find them okay next up let's um because we'll be using docker so let's set the permissions for docker daemon like this and then let's grab the env file which they have shared i'm just going to rename the example file to env and if i show you this file it simply contains some of the docker variables where postgres is running and some of the other things if you are interested some of the api stuff here and there and some of the um, urls and ports and stuff so you don't have to worry about it okay so let's <clears throat> clear the screen next let's uh, run the dx with npm let me run it and it is going to take a bit of a time so let's wait for it to finish it is still pulling that um, DX stuff under the package dot JSON. So let's wait for it to finish. So it took a fair bit of time and you can see that it has done a lot of things here. It has created a database Postgres. If I just scroll to the hub and then go here, you see it has applied some migration, installed database, created the schema, populated it with some of the seed data and a lot of stuff. Okay. Next up, let's run npm with the dev key under package.json. 
this is again going to take a bit of a time so let's wait for it and it has installed it and we can ignore this error because we are not working on workspaces let's try to access it on this port 3000 now and there you go it has loaded first time you would uh, load it it is going to take a long time so be aware of it because it does a lot of things at the back end let me load it to show you you see it has compiled a lot of stuff and then it is telling us about all the uh, you know default encryption keys and stuff you could either uh, log in with the pass key if you have it or you could simply sign in or just log in with the default username password so or you could better ways to just click on this sign up and then create a new user and password the first time it takes a bit of a time to load so you see you, there is a um, full name and all that stuff so maybe i'll just say the then i'm just going to give it my email and then let me put in some of the password here so i have given my email i have given password and then with just your mouse uh, cursor just pressing the mouse create any signature i have created this you can again clear it you can just um, maybe i'll just make it easier i'll just write an f here okay so once that's done just click on next and then it is asking us to claim the username maybe i'll just say it's a here and then click on complete and now let me click on that link i'm not sure if it would be able to access it that is interesting because my system is not really uh, online in a sense that it's behind a firewall so i didn't receive the email so what you can do as a workaround um if for just a way of testing just use this default username example that documentso.com and the password should be this one two three four five six seven eight nine hopefully this is going to work this is from their github repo but of course if you are working in a production environment if you want to expose in to your internet you would need to enable the outbound email or SMTP for this to work. And once you log in, you'll be presented with something uh, like this where you can upload your document and then sign them. So as a sample, I just uploaded my own PDF file here. It just contains some ran random text about me. So if you scroll down, you can even restrict it. You can go with advanced options, but I'm just going to click on continue. On the next screen, you can add multiple signers or you can just add yourself here or you can even give your email and name. So I just clicked on add myself and you see that it has populated email and the name. So let's click on continue. And here is another cool thing. You can add your signature, initials, email or any random text or radio button, lot of other options. So let's go with signature. So for instance, I'll just click on signature and then drag and drop on my document like this. Let's click on continue and then next you can just click on continue to send it for signing and you can send it to uh, give it any optional subject or not or just click on send here and then you will see that it will show you the signature you have that which we wrote earlier on this my pdf dot pdf file and then simply uh, you will also receive an email if the smtp is enabled and then you can just simply go back uh, to the home page and then go from there and this is the home page where you have your own document you can simply click on download to download it and you can have as many documents as you like to sign and if i just click on this download and open this pdf there you go so we have our signature now the other cool thing is that you can just click on template and create a template uh, where you can already have your signature any other um, keys or initials you want and then you can simply reuse that template on any document you like so as you see, uh, it has got a good alternate of uh, DocuSign and a lot of other tools. Let me know what do you think about it. If you also know of any other AI powered tool, please let me know. I'll be happy to review it. And as I said earlier, if you're looking to have your own AI powered tool doing the same thing, but with the power of any vision language model, that would be really cool, I think, because this tool, I think this is 
uh, not evolving as much as I would like and there are a lot of things which needs to be taken care of. Another problem which I see with it is that they also have a I think cloud version, paid version which, uh, which looks good but I'm not sure um, what are the limitations there. So I think it will be really good to have a pure open source free tool without any cloud offering to just go and install all private, all local without worrying about any outbound emails and then sign the documents and then go from there. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you.